Hey guys, welcome back. This is your host, Phil from Cage.com. Today we're going to learn a bit on the Essential Phone, the first ever phone from the company Essential Products by Andy Rubin, as known as the father of Android. Let's start with the outside. It's got a rather interesting design. It's got a cutout on top for the front-facing camera and a little chin on the bottom. But aside from that, it's almost full of a display. It's really close to being truly busyless. The camera cutout there isn't that annoying when you're actually using the phone, but some apps do not work the best with that design cue. What I like the most about this design, however, is that it's got the traditional speaker right there. It doesn't vibrate your screen to generate sound. It's got a good old boring speaker right there that works great. And they even managed to squeeze in a little notification LED there. The materials are also premium. It's got the ceramic back, titanium side, and Gorilla Glass 5 on the front side. My unit, however, didn't show a perfect quality control. It's got a little bit of black things protruding to the white part. I actually had to scrape them off. And thanks to those material choices, it's a bit heavy. And also, I believe that it's got a bit of a geeky design. Uh, they try to make it really clean like a white slate without any obtrusion but those magnetic terminals over there make it look a bit geeky to be honest. You're supposed to attach modules onto it but so far they only came up with 360 degrees camera. Oh and this doesn't come with any weather protection higher than IP53 that's merely a splash proof level so that's a bit of bummer for a 2017 flagship. Now moving on to the next part the display. It's fairly bright. This is not an AMOLED panel. This is TFT LCD. And my unit has a brighter spot on the left-hand side corner. It's not a major deal, but again, not a perfect quality control over there. Internally, the specs are pretty nice. It's got Snapdragon 835 octa-core processor, 4 gigabytes of RAM, and 120 gigabytes of storage. That is not expandable. The software is pretty clean, as you would expect from the phone made by the father of Android. They made the minimal modifications, and it's pretty snappy and smooth when it works right. Occasionally, it will start to stutter and show lags. I don't know why, but you can solve that by killing all the apps. I hope this gets addressed in the future software update. And also about that screen cutout, they try to manage it by utilizing as a status bar that thick. But some of the apps, even the stock Google account app, doesn't utilize that properly. And this happens with more third-party apps than you would expect. Thankfully, the YouTube videos are displayed right before the cutout, so it looks pretty nice. And it doesn't overheat at all, so that's a good thing. Now, enough with the software, let's move into the multimedia department, namely the dual camera system, RGB and monochrome working together. You can simply launch that by double tapping on the power button quickly, twice, and this is the app. I'm a bit disappointed that the stock camera app doesn't even have a cutout infused design, but I'm surprisingly satisfied with the camera quality. It's not the best, but certainly not bad at all. Bright daylight photos are pretty good. Indoor photos are not the best. Uh, the focusing is pretty slow and details in the darkness aren't the best, but they're okay, they're manageable. Portrait mode isn't amazing, but it does its job. Monochrome sensor alone takes a pretty sharp photo. Both rear and front cameras take 4K videos, although you wouldn't really want to use selfie cam that much. It's not the worst, but it does have that greenish tint to it. Now, since we're talking about multimedia, let's move into the audio department. It's got a bottom firing speaker there. They claim that it's got a stereo speaker, but the top one utilizing a receiver doesn't really work that well, so I'm just gonna call it the mono speaker. And as a mono one, it's not bad at all. Uh, it's got a pretty loud volume. It's got a, you know, okay balance between the sounds. I actually enjoyed watching video on this guy. What I didn't enjoy so much is using my wired headphones. It doesn't have the earphone jack, so you have to use the bundled adapter or the USB Type-C earphones or the Bluetooth headphones. They do work. They actually work fine. Maybe it's about time for me to get used to it. Surprisingly, a bit of disappointment came from the battery department. It's got a 30-40 mAh battery built in, and it only gave me 4.5 hours to 5 hours-ish screen on time. Of course, I'm always on LTE network and I surf the web all the time, so most of you should gain more than this on your daily average, but comparing the performance on the same usage pattern with the other devices, this is a bit disappointing in 2017 flagship. Fortunately, charging is pretty fast with the bundle 27 watt charger. And now that I told you this much, it's time for the verdict. The Essential phone is not bad. I, I see the potential. They wanted to make a simple bezel-less phone and they did mostly fine. Personally, there are things that I don't like. It doesn't come with the earphone jack, micro SD card expansion, dual SIM mobility, stereo speaker, weather protection, but it doesn't mean that it's a bad product. For the launching price of $699, most definitely not. But for now, they're selling it for $499 from the official store. A bezel-less phone with Snapdragon 835 and 128 gigabytes of built-in storage for $499, that's not bad. 
I wouldn't recommend this to everyone, but if you know what you're getting and if you're okay with the little geeky touches here and there, then this could be an okay daily driver. It's not super, but it's okay. You can probably deal with it. Meanwhile, I'll be waiting for the second generation. I think it's going to be great if they did this much with the first ever product. So that was the essential film. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments. You can always meet us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. We'll see you guys later. Ciao.